Let's go. Let's get at it. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to the Cats and Bolts podcast, Florida's favorite NHL show and Florida's also most watched hockey show. We are coming to you with episode number 24 from the Podcast Junkie Studio in beautiful downtown Boca Raton, Florida. I am one half of the show, Rod Peterson. She is the other half of the show, Serena Taylor. And are you ever in luck? It's our special <laughs> NHL trade deadline special. Again, what are you laughing at over there? Nothing. What? No, no. Something. Are you ever in luck? I was like, what is he going to say? <laughs> yeah, uh, that, man. <laughs> we, we've we got news, and I didn't bring my bell down here to ring it, but uh, the Florida Panthers have served notice. They are in it to win it, which we all kind of knew. But on Wednesday, they made the big trade getting uh, Vladimir Tarasenko from the Ottawa Senators. We're going to talk about that. And a lot more. we got viewer questions here today. We've got a tailgate party to talk about coming up. But I just want to say uh, that we're brought to you by DraftKings as well as Beach House Pompano, Baresco, Eat Fitness, and Peterson Recovery. But before I get to a couple notes, how are you doing, Serena? What's on top of mind with you? What's up? I think the trade deadline, like I say every year, we were not expecting something big to happen. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden... Tarasenko's here. Bing, bing, bing. Nobody saw that coming, of course, right? And it's not really surprising, but I was a little shocked when I, I was working all day and then all of a sudden I pulled up TSN on the trade deadline, the live thing. I'm like, whoa, Bo and Byron went here and this person went here. And I'm like, what is all happening today? Yeah, it's been that day. And uh, so I just want to say this. I said I had a couple notes that I want to say. I have a couple thank yous that I want to send out. I just read these to Serena. She's too busy with her other business or her business to read viewer uh, comments, you know? So uh, one is from Florida Panthers fan, Den, and he said, seriously, so happy and thankful y'all are making these shows, making Florida a legit hockey place. And to me, you know me better than anybody. I'm, I think anywhere with hockey is a legit hockey place. But I kind of get what he's saying because I can't find the Florida Panthers coverage either. F largely. There are there are some places, but not ad nauseum, not like Canada. And then the other thank you was to Brent Waltman, who you know, the guy that drove us to Tampa Bay for the Battle of Florida. He says, he goes, this is, I've been waiting 20 years for this kind of coverage of the Florida sports teams. So I told him, I said, you're like my lighthouse. You know what I mean? Like now I know where I'm going because I was in the fog before. I didn't know what people wanted. They just kind of want what we were doing in Canada, but they want it here. It's not that hard. Yeah, I think you know? what kind of validated it for me was when we were standing outside talking to Doug McLean. He's like, there's no hockey stuff around here. Like he was like, I see why you guys are doing this. And I think that's why we've had so many former Panthers and coaches really come on and help us because they understand the importance of this and how how many people want this to happen. Yeah, well, I don't feel like we're doing anything particularly special nor noble. You get it, but I can kind of now get where they're coming from. So thanks for watching and thanks for the kind words because, as you know, people don't generally say nice things in this society. No, they only they complain. complain. Yeah. yeah. For so, some reason, it takes more energy to say nice things than it does complain. Yeah. So, so here we are. Did I tell you you look awfully great today, by the way? That, see, you're learning. You're getting ahead of this whole thing. Uh, yes, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> away we go into the hockey talk. Now, I'll say it again. The big news on Wednesday, Vladimir Tarasenko, the Tarasenko show, big on skills, no doubt, won a Stanley Cup with St. Louis, which, by the way, was way back in 2019. That's getting to be a while ago now, Serena. But he is a Florida Panther. Let's jump right out. I had to scratch all of my notes because they hadn't made a trade yet when I started to write this down. Vladimir Tarasenko to Florida from Ottawa for a couple of draft picks. And the Senators are paying half his salary for the rest of the year. It's so his contract's going to be up at the end of the year. It didn't take me very long to think this is win-win. I was the guy that didn't think the Panthers needed to do anything. But you can't lose adding a guy like this. Well, I think the biggest thing when people talk about a trade is they're like, well, if the Panthers made a trade, who would they have to give up? And everybody gets stressed out about who they'd have to give up. Mm -hmm. They gave up, what, a fourth round and a fifth round pick yeah. or something? Couple of draft picks, which doesn't necessarily mean insignificance, but the situation the Ottawa Senators are in right now, they're probably better off in that place. And if they wanted to dump Tarasenko, in my opinion, there is a reason. Ottawa knows they're not going to win the Stanley Cup this year. They know that's a little bit off, but the big talk was whether or not Jacob Chikrin was going to move or somebody, a defenseman like that, and all of a sudden Tarasenko goes, there's a reason. 
there's a reason and it's benefiting both teams. Well, that's my thing is I wondered why Tarasenko had been on the block for like his last five years in St. Louis, but never went anywhere. And then he went to New York last year. He was almost at this trade deadline and he was almost a point a game in the playoffs, but he wasn't a game breaker. They lost in round one, as you know, and in Ottawa this year, Kind of flamed out. But I think if you're Bill Zito, and I've kind of enjoyed what the Panthers fans have been saying. I've seen it online. Some are saying, do something, Bill. What are you doing? What are you waiting for? That was on one end of the spectrum. And on the other, it was, don't do anything, Bill. That's kind of what I was. You're the number one team in the NHL. You've won 12 of your last 13. What You don't need anything. But this was a good trade. And I that's, think so. Right. And that's my thing. If you want... Do you think he can do a better job than the general manager of the Panthers, or for that matter, Chris Greer of the Dolphins? Go drop your resume off. They have that job for a reason. You know what I mean? This was a win. I think so. I mean, especially in the position that they're in. Like I said, the position Ottawa's in. But here's how I look at it. This Tarasenko trade is either going to be gold or it's going to be a bust. He's going to get injured or it's going to be great. But there's been some players that have come to the Panthers over the last few years, like Mark Stahl. I was like, oh, he's going to, this is going to be a great addition. And it didn't really pan out. He's a great player. He played well, but it wasn't, like you said, he wasn't a, a game breaker guy. Mm -hmm. Tarasenko is a talented hockey player. But typically when it comes to Europeans, it can be hit or miss. You never know what you're going to get with them. So like we said, there's a reason he's probably on the bubble in St. Louis for a long time. There's a reason Ottawa got rid of him. I don't know if it's a dressing room thing. I don't know what it is, but there's, there, it's not all sunshine and roses when it comes to hockey trades. You don't usually hang on to... Sorry, I got like that doesn't usually bounce around unless there's a reason right. is what you're getting at and what I've been saying. Okay, moving on. Okay, ding, ding, point two. Just this week, for whatever reason, somebody posted and it caught my eye the playoff matchups as of that day. You know it's going to change 87 ways from Sunday between now and the start of the playoffs, but just for fun, as of like Tuesday this week, here are your round one matchups. The New York Rangers versus the Detroit Red Wings in the East. Classic. Beauty. Uh, classic original six there. That would be a beauty series. Carolina, Philadelphia, which Brindamore, did he play for Philly? Brindy, or was yes. he, 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 he? That's what I thought. Carolina, Philadelphia would be a good series. Here's one for you, Johnny O. Boston, Toronto. Again. That would be another dandy. That would be a, that's a gonger. We're, uh, you know, and we're not at the show yet where we sit back and make our picks, right? We could sit and say who we think was going to win, but I was waiting for this one. The Florida Panthers and Tampa Bay Lightning in round one again, <laughs> which I'm here for. I'd kind of like to see it happen round two or three. But it's looking like that's a round one matchup. It's interesting because we had that talk with Chikrin when he was here. He's like, I wish the playoff format was so that it could be further down the road. But it could be if <laughs> they don't play, if Florida's currently sitting in first place. And if if something happens and they don't, it could be further down the road that they play. And uh, that would be really interesting. I think everybody, and I keep sticking with this, I think everybody's writing Tampa off. They're like, oh, well, if they're, if they're not going to get through the first round anyway. What did I say? Don't count them out. And who were we watching the other night? Said, do not count this team out. Uh, I don't remember, but you said, see, he agrees with me. I remember you saying that. I don't remember who said it. I think it was Hockey Night in we Canada. We watched too we many talking guys. about it. BXA. Was it BXA? Be, I think it was somebody like that. Uh, Kelly. So can I be spoiler and say you're picking Tampa to beat the Panthers in round one? No, Should no, it no. I'm oh. saying, no, no, no. I'm saying in general, like if they don't play in the first round, nobody's giving them any credit to potentially play the Panthers further down. Hey, that means the Panthers have to win. Yeah. That means Tampa Ooh. has to win, whatever. Like people, let's relax here for a second. I will the take playoffs are a different. I, yes, state. but I will take Florida to win a round one match. If they beat them 9 2 the last time they played, doesn't matter. Um, and by the way, Johnny, I'll take the Leafs to beat the Bruins. Deal with it. <laughs> and just for fun, point three the Leafs ain't beating anybody. <laughs> <laughs> they can't beat a wet paper bag. Uh, Vancouver in the West, just for fun. Tell me your winners Vancouver, Nashville. Pro That's got to be Vancouver, as it Vancouver. stands today. But uh, for the record, I was looking at the standings in the West and the East. The teams in the West, in my opinion, 
are so much stronger than the teams in the East. The amount of Stanley Cup contenders in the West, in my opinion, dominates the Stanley Cup contender amount in the East. It's a harder road to get to the Stanley Cup, though, for them. It's tough. It's brutal. Right, so that's big reason why Tampa won two in a row. Uh, Dallas-Vegas, again. If Dallas and Vegas played... Vegas, Dallas is another team you never count out. However, Vegas is just that team. They just have they have it. They have it. Do you that want me be, to prep you for these before the show? Because no, I'm just lobbing the matter. That would be my favorite first round series of the whole thing. Dallas Vegas. Yes, because okay. it would be so good. Uh Winnipeg, Colorado. Can you imagine poor Winnipeg? Well, I mean, Colorado would probably win, but Winnipeg is fast. Winnipeg would have home ice if that matters. I, yeah, it, well, I mean, uh, is Kyle Connors back? He was hurt. Yes, he's back. He's back. Yeah, that guy's fast, man. He's lighting it up. Yeah. And the Edmonton Oilers <laughs> versus the Los Angeles Kings. Again. Ed- Edmonton would beat the Kings. No doubt. Mm-hmm. I feel like when it comes to your team, you're too biased. Well, that is the biggest load of crap I have ever heard. When have I ever picked my team except for when they played Calgary and nobody gave them a chance? I don't pick. You know I don't pick. That's because you're afraid they're going to lose. I'm not biased. I know. I've told you, Oiler fans are harder on the Oilers than anybody else. I know if the Edmonton's going to lose. When Edmonton played Colorado, I'm like, we're cooked. Colorado's unbelievable. Yeah, I just feel like you, you're you just clouded. That's all. It's not a, it's not a criticism. I am the most realistic hockey fan there is, especially when it comes to my own team. Because I'm not clouded by stuff. I see when the Oilers are playing like crap, the Oilers are playing unbelievable right now. The Kings are up and down. They have the ability. I saw it when the Kings were here. I couldn't believe they didn't win that game. But, no. Respectfully disagree. Uh, what did you think about the Oilers trades uh, acquiring from Anaheim, Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick? Well, much like the Panthers, they gave up uh, draft picks. Like, it wasn't anything crazy. Edmonton didn't really give anything up. So I I think best-case scenario, it's a win. However, any other time, I've been like, cool, Edmonton got Duncan Keith. Edmonton got this defenseman. It's been kind of a letdown. But we're going all in, and there's not a lot of guys out there. They certainly weren't going to trade for Hannafin. Now, come on. Well, there was a rumor, by the way, that the Flames... Did you see this? She doesn't get into the buzz as much as I do, but there was a rumor that the Oilers offered a first-round pick and a roster player for Jacob Markstrom. That's the, a rumor. There yeah. is there is Came no, from Elliot Friedman, but... I would be... Yeah, because he's always right. <laughs> Just like the rest of them. Yeah. I would be shocked. I would be shocked if the Edmonton Oilers and Calgary Flames pulled off a trade that involved... A goalie. A goaltender. I mean, there's been, what, one or two trades in the entire history of the NHL between those two teams. There wasn't a trade between those teams until Curtis Glencross got traded between the two teams like 10 years ago. They hate each other. It's not going to happen. They do. Oddly enough, though, they did flip goalies in free agency. Mike Smith went from Calgary to Edmonton, and Cam Talbot went from Edmonton to Calgary. Free agency, It wasn't though. a trade. No, exactly. But, okay, to the viewer questions, which are always fun. We're like halfway, almost halfway through already. See how much fun this is? It goes fast. And uh, I should take this opportunity with this break to tell you that we're brought to you by DraftKings, introducing the no-sweat bet for new customers up to $1,000. Get a bonus bet back in the amount of your original wager. If your first bet doesn't hit, use the promo code THPN. You see it on the screen. It stands for the Hockey Podcast Network. Again, the no sweat bet from DraftKings, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. When we have live guests, which I think we're going to have a good one here next week to break down all the trades once they happen, they get a gift card from Beach House Pompano, a scenic rooftop restaurant on the shores of Pompano Beach. If you haven't been there, check it out. There are Biggest and most prized partner of this show. And Baresco, a tropical outpost serving only the freshest tacos and lush jungle vibes located at 225 North Pompano Beach Boulevard. We got to get there soon, Serena. We do. It's been a hot minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to the viewer questions, again, I just put this up the morning of this taping. And they're already old. Jersey Jim writes and says, could the Panthers do nothing? At that point, they hadn't. How would you have felt if they had done nothing? Uh, and again, I've advocated for that. No trades. 
I don't think it I don't think anybody would have been upset and I don't think it would have been a bad move. I don't think this is a bad move, but they're just kind of sitting there doing really good things, winning a lot of games right now. There's no need to disrupt it. I don't think they disrupted anything. They just added. That's why I say with Bill Zito, um, he's good at what he does. He was a finalist, was he not, for GM of the year last year? Or did he even win it outright? Either way, he no. knows what he's doing. So, yeah, uh, he's in that role for a reason. As she said, nobody saw this coming, the Tarasenko thing. I didn't either. We'll see how it works out, by the way. But so far, it's getting uh, the stamp of approval from Cats and Bolts. Uh, point five, this isn't really a question, but Ben Cobbs, I should actually send this. I'll send this. Nah. Ben wrote us and said, nice to meet you, Rod. Uh, by the way, the new rink, or he says, the rink opens on March 21st. I can only imagine that he's talking about the new Fort Lauderdale War Memorial Arena, the practice rink. Oh, I was going to airdrop it to Ben, but I don't. I need your help to do that, so we won't do it. But Ben, trust me, got your message. Thank you. It was great to meet you, too. And for anybody else that sees us on the concourse at Panthers games or Lightning games, come up like Ben did and say hi. Uh, that was fun. We took a photo together. It was great. Um, fun question from the Alexander Barkov fan page. He says, name one player from other teams you'd like to see on Florida or Tampa Bay. I'm not going to go through 31 other teams and tell you who I'd like to see here. And frankly, I kind of like the makeup of both teams. I really do. But if do you want to broach the subject of Connor McDavid leaving Edmonton? What do no. You, okay, <laughs> didn't think so. No I just <laughs> gave her a chance to answer. Is there anybody else out there? You, I mean, I love Bob. I like Chucky. I love Barkov. I'm assuming... He means in general, not just the trade deadline, right? Like just best case scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Best case scenario. Well, I'll tell you what. Tampa's in a position where I don't think they have a lot of room for anybody. They're tapped out with salary cap. They're kind of where they are. But they kind of have to let their guys fizzle out. Like it, it's it's easy to be like, oh, well, Connor McDavid would be great here and Leon Dreisaitl and Austin Matthews and whatever. But that's not a reality. No. You know, and with all the players that Tampa has right now, they're kind of filtering guys out, which is what's been happening in Pittsburgh. They're just kind of letting the old dogs die, if you get my drift. Um, but I don't really feel like the Panthers are in the same position. However, they are locked and loaded right now. So if he's talking trade deadline, I think the Panthers really kind of got what they were going to get. But other than that, I mean... You know, it's hard to say. Anybody could be, any top player could be good here. Like a Drew Doughty, I think, would be fantastic well, in either team. Do you like him that much? Oh, I love Drew Doughty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think what's happening with Drew Doughty is the same thing that happened with Dustin Brown in L.A. It was just, he was just there for too long. Just have to make a move, get a fresh start, get all, just kind of shake things up a little bit for both Doughty and the team. Now, L.A.'s not in a position to dump Doughty because they really don't have anybody else that is even holds a candle to his L.A. Family. Didn't you say, I think you said Anaheim. Did I say Anaheim? I Sorry, did. L.A. doesn't really have the opportunity to dish him off. But a guy like Drew Doughty on the point, like there are not a lot of teams that have good defensemen. I'm going to throw the Panthers in there too. They don't have a lot of solid defensemen. Nobody really does. Yeah, that reminds me uh, a couple of things. Ben has the photo, Ben Castro, of Ben Cobbs, who stopped me on the concourse at American Bank Arena. There, it is. there we are. It's that guy, Benny. Vamos Gatos. Va vamos Gatos. Yeah, I, I'll get it. <laughs> it means uh, let's go, Cats. Let's go. That I figured. I think I Googled it. <laughs> vamos Gatos. Vamos ga yeah. Famous Gatos. Yeah. yeah. Famous Amos. And oh, that's the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> what? Sometimes the things that come out of your mouth because you just haven't been floridized yet. I'm getting there, which is actually a great point. <laughs> that's my next point. Um, Dale Talon actually sat in this chair and said what he wanted to change the culture here in Florida and in the NHL was that the Panthers were a team that you wanted to come to at the end of your career to <laughs> sail off into the sunset. Now it's like a it's a destination where players want to come to. And I was Tampa always? Tampa never, I feel, battled that. Well, I think the thing with the Panthers is it's the environment. It's the sun. It's the palm trees. It's the warmth. People are like, I've been busting my balls off freezing in Winnipeg for 10 years, and I have the opportunity to go play a year or two in South Florida. See you later. 
I'm going. Guys don't care where they play a lot of time. You know, it kind of goes to the conversation of when a team down here or in some of the southern states wins the Stanley Cup. If a Canadian team wins the Stanley Cup, they don't have to plan out different events. That cup is everywhere. Whereas down here, if they win, it's like, I remember when I was living in California, when the Kings or the Ducks won the Stanley Cup, it's like, we had, they had to make special days. These players had to take the cup because as soon as those players get the Stanley Cup, they're going to their own hometown. That's where they're going. And so all the people in Canada get the opportunity to see the Stanley Cup. So it kind of, it, it, as far, as far as like Florida going to be the place to die, it's because there's not, it's just a different environment down here. They can come play out their final season. They don't care if they win a Stanley Cup or not. They got a warm place to play and make some more money. Yeah. Well, these days, from what I hear from the team staff, is the players care less about winning than they ever did. Don't blame me. They want to make as much money as they can. Well, that's my point. Uh, yeah. Like, you look at Tampa. You think Steve Stamkos gives a shit that he plays in Tampa? No. He won the Stanley Cup. He's there to win a Stanley Cup. He doesn't care where it is. That's the thing that's changed a lot. Yeah. Well, he almost went to Toronto. He's had the chance, but was kind of talked out of it by a Leafs legend. I'll, I'll just leave it there saying, you got it great in Tampa. Why well, if would it ain't you broke, leave? Don't fix it. Yeah, that right? was that totally. was the advice. Yeah, totally. Um, from Burray ten ninety six is the account says uh, Barkov's assist. Have you two seen anything like it? Did you see the highlights? I have not. Okay, I never know what you have watched and what you haven't. I I it guarantee up here for... I've definitely seen more assists that are more talented. I can't see it. What's happening here? Oh, look close. D D D. Just bear with us. Yeah, I mean it's. He's he's it doesn't surprise me. I mean, Barkov is the kind of player that his focus he is dialed in all the time. Barkov always knows where he needs to be on the ice. He's so focused. Not every player is like that. Yeah. Not every guy is as focused as Barkov. <laughs> so guys, any guy can do that with their stick. But doing it in the middle of the game, it's focused by Barkov. I, I mean, obviously we've seen nicer assists, but that is. It doesn't surprise me with Barkov. Not for a second. Oh, you, Betty oh, Attaboy look at found look at this. it. What's up with that? That's the assist. Oh, yeah. the old, yeah. how's she going? Grapes would say. Yeah. Ben, you didn't just do that. I <laughs> like he gives me the love wink. Ben. I love He's the best producer in this building. Sorry, Christian. Oh, and okay. there's another look at the bar cup. Boop, 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 beep. Yeah. And it's, I had a cute it's up more, It's more impressive. Yeah, there it's more impressive. But, you know, it's... It's not like he juggled it 50 times. He batted yeah. it, batted it. It's a bouncing puck. Nice work, Ben Casper. Doesn't surprise me with Barkov. Um, no, but I'll say, have we seen anything like it? Not specifically that, but I mean, there's a lot of really cool things that are going on in the NHL now. You realize the game's changed from when we watched it in the 80s and 90s. And I, whether it's Bedard or there was a two on, oh, I think with kachuk here last week where he passed it backwards again it's like what are you doing most guys would take the shot you know what i mean it's like they have eyes in the back of their head they stop the flow and pass it back the other way you never used to see that you know what i mean bedard did that exact same thing but the other way about a month ago the skill is insane i think i think bedard is that player like mcdavid that has that ability to regardless of which way he shoots you know he can put the puck either side Again, not every guy can do that, but Bedard has the ability to do that. But I think, you know, it just goes down to practice. They're used to practicing with each other. Yeah. They do different things. If you look at the Russians in the 70s, the way that's how the Russians practiced. The Canadians in the Summit Series did not see any of that coming because the Russians, they didn't see the Russians. That's how the Russians practice. And so that's kind of the thing that we've started to implement, I think, over here. And that's why we're seeing it more. Yeah. Well, the one, just the one thing she was saying, Barkov's athleticism, she's not surprised because of the things he can do athletically. What I love about Barkov and you see why he's the captain. I mean, again, I read way more of what the fans say. I don't think she reads any of it. And whenever there's a team photo, like at a fancy supper or like the New Year's party, Barkov's never there. He's always at home with his family. He's never out. And that's not that he's not a team guy. He's just a serious guy. I, he, like a Jonathan Taves kind yeah, of guy. It, it doesn't surprise me uh, with Barkov or like a Bobrovsky. Bobrovsky being a goaltender, he's obviously got a lot different focus. 
but those guys have a discipline that you can't teach. They grew yeah. up in a disciplined environment, much the difference between a lot of kids that are born in Canada and kids that aren't. If you get a Rye or a Finn that is that discipline, the Finns are very disciplined, but I think Barkov is next level for that. Uh, here's a fun one from Stuart. He says, is it possible to cheer for both Tampa Bay and Florida? I will say... You can do whatever the hell you want, Stuart. It's not a it's not a monstrosity by no. any stretch of the imagination. If I if if I see people that ask if you can cheer for both the Leafs and the Habs, no. Can you cheer for both Edmonton and the other team South? Absolutely not. There's there's certain, but like I I think I learned this when I lived in California. There's Ducks and Kings fans. I'm like. What? How is that even? I can't even wrap my head around that. It's just, but it's something that I've learned that happens down here. Uh, let me go one further, Stuart. Is it possible to cheer for Tampa Bay and Florida? I do. So if it's just the two of us, we're good. She brings up the Leafs and the Habs. No, you can't. And in Alberta, you are taking your life into your own hands. And I'm not joking about that. I had. Ron McLean, the legendary host of Hockey Night in Canada on my other show, the Rod Peterson Show one time, I was wearing a Vegas Golden Knights jacket in Calgary. He's like, what are you doing? He goes, are you, don't wear that to the game tonight because Vegas was there. Um, and that's just Vegas. Calgary, Edmonton, Serena, as you know, we can say it one more time. They literally hate each other. But I don't see it here in Florida. I don't see Bucks fans hating Dolphins fans or Marlins fans hating Rays fans. I get that they're not in the same leagues or divisions. But I just don't see that. No. Is that a Florida thing? It's, well, no, because the colleges don't like each other. This is a college state. This is a college sport state. You can tell where someone's kid goes to school because their car will represent it. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And their garage. I, I absolutely <laughs> love that. College football dominates down here as it probably should. It's a it's a big deal. Yeah, it's been around for 100 years. The hockey team has been around for 30. The NBA sure, team's 35. But e either way, you know, yeah. it's just you can't teach that stuff. You can push hockey. You can push baseball till the cows come home. It's just not that environment here. Stuart, yes, you can. The most important thing is that you're cheering for hockey teams and following it. That's all that matters. Cheer for whoever the hell you want. And if you got a problem with that with it, from anybody, tell them to come see me. Yeah, because Rod's going to do something about it. We'll deal it. with it. Brent <laughs> Waltman. This was a late add to our question lineup. Says, uh, the president's trophy jinx. Is it real or imagined? And for I those, wouldn't want to win it. Yeah, for those that don't know, he's talking about the team that wins the regular season um, champion or, you know, regular season points total. Um. Do you, is this a jinx to go on to win the Stanley Cup? It's that they lose out in the first round. I, I wouldn't want to win it. <laughs> that would just be, that's how it always happens. I can, I'm superstitious, no doubt about it. But it's I'm not about superstition. That. Well, maybe it is, but I've gone to the big board. Here's the list of President's Trophy winners. Are you ready? Let's just do the last 10 years. Boston Bruins last year, lost out first round. Florida Panthers two years ago. Lost out second round. Colorado Avalanche three years ago. Lost out second round. Boston Bruins before that. Lost second round. Tampa Bay Lightning 2019. Lost first round. Got swept first round. 2018 Nashville Predators. Lost second round. 2017 Washington Capitals. Lost second round. 2016 Washington Capitals. Lost second round. 2015 New York Rangers. Lost conference finals. 2014 Boston Bruins. Lost second round. So going back to 2014, every team that's won the President's Trophy has not won the Stanley Cup. Doesn't matter when they win or lose out. They didn't win the Stanley Cup, period. They didn't even get there. Not that that matters, because if you lose, you lose. If you don't right. win the Stanley Cup, you might as well lose in the first round and let us all sleep. Second place is the first loser. Right. I, I would not want to win it. It's just, it's gotten to that point where it's become a thing. So is it a jinx? I, I don't know, but it... It, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to win it. The last team to win the President's Trophy and then go on to win the Stanley Cup is the Chicago Blackhawks in 2013. I was going to say probably Detroit in the late 90s, but yeah, okay. 
So is it a uh, jinx? I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> but if you win it, you don't win the Stanley Cup. So you call it whatever you want. Um, Shay asks, which bubble teams uh, will make the playoffs of any of these? Islanders, Capitals, Kraken, Flames, Blues, or Penguins? Anything going to make a miraculous run in the last month here? I don't know about that, but I will give Seattle some credit. They have been playing really well. When I watched Seattle and Edmonton on Saturday, what a game. Seattle was, they did not quit the entire game. They won this week at least one or two games. Um, Again, do I think they're going to make the playoffs? I don't know, but... Any one of those. I, I never I never I never count out stupid Calgary. Never. I just don't trust them. They they somehow I get clouded by her hate. Somehow these guys are still in the mix. Somehow that team that's probably what the outsiders and this isn't even me commenting, this is everybody else talking about what a train wreck the flames are this year and last year essentially, and they're still in the mix. I don't get it. It's because they're a talented team that plays when they want to. They don't have garbage and, and, players. Yeah, exactly. And that's not new. That's why they're in the bind that they're in. And our last question as we wind this up comes from Alec, and I appreciate it. He says, any advice for someone who wants to start a podcast but doesn't have anyone to do it with? For me, you're asking the wrong guy because I treat broadcasting and podcasting like brain surgery. When Serena and I had the idea last summer to do this show, we were going to do it right from the start. And we researched the best podcast studios to go to, right, Ben? And we came up with the pod. None of them were available, so we came here. (laughs) I'm joking. We came to the best one, Podcast Junkie Studios. Let me say that again. We researched the best podcast studios, and Podcast Junkies was where we came. And look at this. So... I don't know what to tell you. Any advice for someone who wants to start a podcast but doesn't have anyone to do it with? Don't ask me because if because I'm going to do it at a high level. Well, I think from it depends what your podcast is about. There's so many podcasts out there right now. If you're just going to be another person doing a podcast about something that a billion other people are doing, you're probably going to want to do it right, or it's not going to matter. You know, but as broadcasters, we're like, we're not messing around. We're not just going to turn our laptops on and be talking from the other room to each other and have some kind of recorded thing that we put up. There's a lot involved. You got to cut it. You got to get your clips. You got to put it on Spotify. You got to get it on YouTube. You got to get all that kind of stuff. You got to advertise it. So I guess it depends what you're looking for would be my advice. But if you're going to start a podcast to just start a podcast, don't. <laughs> Takes I think a lot. I saw somewhere there are. 2 million podcasts in America. And I feel like it's like there's 2 million sports podcasts alone, let alone cooking shows and pet shows and God knows whatever else. Um, It's a crowded landscape. So she says, figure out why you want to do it. Do you want to do it to make money? Do you want to do it because you want to be a star? Or do you want to do it to have fun? which is primarily why we're doing this. Or maybe you want to do it to educate people. Maybe you're an accountant and you want to educate people on how to do their taxes properly. Great. Then you could sit in front of your laptop and just do some stuff like that. It just depends on if it's entertainment value or if it's for more of an educational experience. Mm -hmm. And we felt like uh, we just wanted to talk hockey. We didn't have any plans or designs on how popular it would be or wouldn't be. Uh, Somebody in Canada, where I came from, said you could be the 10,000th guy talking football in Florida or be the only guy talking hockey. And that's where we're at. I would just so. rather not compete with the with the football people around here. There is a mm. lot of football people that know a lot about football, and you guys can have it because they know what they're doing. And more than anything, we wanted to just have fun, and most shows we do. It's like hit and miss. I actually put zero work into preparing for this show. And it shows. I show up because I don't have to put in effort. I'm a natural. I don't have to have an iPad and a phone and a paper and a pen and a this. No, but honestly, like to Rod's credit. She's joking, I think. Yeah, he's like looking out of the corner of his eye. (laughs) Fuck, is she saying? 
But I, I literally, he does all the work because it's just in his bones to do this kind of stuff and have everything dialed in. And I just, because he likes to surprise me with the information and that's <laughs> the whole part of it. He's like, what's she going to say about this? Mm -hmm. There's some things like right before we left the house, we were talking about the Tarasenko trade. I'm like, this is either going to be great or it's going to be a huge bust, but it's not going to matter because at the end of the year, Tarasenko is not going to be here anyway. There you go, ending it where we started it. And one more life tip, Ben and Kristen, you can listen up. It's not happy wife, happy life. It's happy you, happy life. We'll see you next week on the Cats and Bolts podcast. <laughs> <laughs> <Thanks about it. laughs>